Hello, but hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. As always, all today's stories will be time marked down below in the description. Hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into our first story though, which is actually a recap story furthering on the story I touched on a few days ago. If you guys did not watch that video about the oldest CSGO team to compete in the history of the game itself, I'll link the video down below for those of you who have actually not watched it yet. I actually snagged a Diamond in the Rough interview out there, an English interview with one of the Silver Sniper members. Silver Snipers being the team, the oldest CSGO team to compete in history, an average age of 71 years old. I'll I'll quickly show you guys the members of that team on screen as well and they actually competed this past weekend at DreamHack Winter and they competed against a few fans there and a few other teams very very lightly of course they're kind of a meme on the scene right now they're kind of a, a not to say a joke of a team but it is kind of a joke form of advertisement but it's great to see people of this age actually playing CSGO and enjoying it so here's a quick interview clip thanks to Sports One, a German company out there I'll link the full interview down below for all of you guys but here's an interview with one of their members known as Wendy and his, and his thoughts and the experience he had this past weekend my name is Wendy, uh, 75 years old, uh, CS, CS, Counter Strike. I think uh, the difficulty is th that you have to, uh, I think the best uh, tactic is to jump, and I didn't jump uh, any time at all. So that, that uh, for the uh, players that are against us, it uh, has very easy to shoot us actually. So I think I must have an other tactic, jump much more, but then it's uh, very difficult to aim and, and uh, kill the opponents if you jump, I think. What I heard, they have been practicing in many years, and this is the first time uh, we have been practicing uh, about uh, one week, uh, one month, three times during one month. So that's the only our team has practiced uh, actually. Yes, fun? yes, very fun. It's <laughs> this is really amazing. <laughs> Dreamhack, it, it's uh, about the uh, noise. I would say <laughs> I'm not used to, to this time of events actually. And I do apologize. I really couldn't snag any other English interviews out there. I really don't think there's any to be actually seen as of right now. I'll keep you guys posted about those interviews. The team itself is fully Swedish, so uh, mainly the only interviews I actually could find in English were of their male members, Wendy being one of the few people on the team who actually speaks fluent English. I couldn't get any interviews, though, with any of the female members. That was actually Knitting Knight, and I think the other one's name is actually uh, Teen Slayer, so that kind of a weird nickname for her. But yeah, unfortunately enough, I couldn't get any other interviews for you guys, but I hope you did enjoy that. The oldest team in CSG Go, obviously enjoying themselves. On top of that though, a huge story to break a few days ago actually on the Brazilian ESPN page. I'll link it down below for all of you guys. It's called ESPN U of L. It's pretty much the Brazilian page for ESPN, but it actually wasn't covered on the American ESPN, which is known internationally by many of you English speakers out there. And that's the story of many people out there, apparently Fallen being one of them alongside his teammate Taco and some other investors possibly starting a new Brazilian organization, which will be involved in CSGO. To give you guys a full breakdown of those people on that list, of course Fallen and Taco will be a part of this. Uh, they're obviously, uh, co of course, from SK Gaming. On top of that, their former coach and the current Liquid coach, Zeus. Also, Apoka. Apoka known for being the Luminosity Gaming coach. And alongside that, Dead is currently an SK Gaming manager. Those five people in total, Fallen, ta uh, Taco, Apoka, Dead, and Zeus, apparently are joining up to actually start their own organization. Sometime soon, the announcement should be coming in the next month or so. And sometime throughout 2018, they want to announce not only a CSGO roster, a League of Legends roster, and also, of course, maybe a Rainbow Six Siege roster which is absolutely incredible to see so overall my thoughts on this and I'll link the article down below for all of you guys as well as show you some tidbits of that article I think it's an amazing idea we've seen over the past few years especially over the past two years with Fallen himself Fallen is a very iconic man he's very a very very good at branding himself and of course he's done many things in Brazilian scene which we probably don't even know about he has a lot of connections through SK gaming itself as well as through uh, just in playing the eSport itself as well we know Neymar is very well connected and of course uh, Fallen has done a number of things before all of this uh, has started his his work with Gen X, his work with teaching people strats and grenades, before the whole Boomio thing came along. You guys remember Boomio, the website that was che teaching people strats and grenades and having pro players on there? Fallen was doing that kind of stuff months and months before Boomio even came around and then of course went out of business. Fallen is a very well branded man, very very well advertised and of course an iconic figure in Brazil. I think whatever he does has a great chance of being at least, at the very least, mildly successful. So I am very excited to actually see when their announcement comes live guys. Those five people those five Brazilian figures are going to start a new Brazilian organization and they will definitely have lots of players trying to sign up for those teams. Leave a comment down below. What do you guys think? I know it's very expensive to start a new organization out there, but what do you guys think? Can they be successful? 
I think so. Oh, hey guys, glad you're still watching. I actually have a sponsor for this video and the next two videos. So thanks to CSGO Cases, they're an app. The top line in the description will be will link to their app down below. And here's a quick ad they wanted to play for the for the video. If you guys want to check it out and earn some free skins, feel free to. And thanks for watching, guys. I still got sponsors. That that's awesome. And another North American CSGO news for all you CLG fans out there, it does seem the majority of their roster, at least three to four of their members, do want to play together in the future, and it seems that CLG has now announced their asking buyout price, and apparently according to Decay and other sources out there, the buyout price will be at least $500,000. Now I know many of you North American fans are thinking that's a pretty ridiculous price. It does come though with those four members, Ryu, uh, of course Kusta, Ethan, and Cutler. I know it might be Ryu or Ryu, I might have mispronounced that there, but those are the four primary members, and it's kind of important to actually also mention here as well, they do have ESL Pro League spots as well as ECS spots, and so that's why the buy-in price is probably so extreme for these guys. Do I expect anyone to actually pay that price? Most likely not. On top of that, though, we do have probably two of their more primary members, FNS and Ricky. They're set to expire in a few months for their contracts, so that's not really a part of the deal, although it kind of is. So the CLG contracts buyout price is $500,000, technically for six players, mainly for the majority four who do want to play together. FNS and Ricky do want to go off and play on their own things, but that's also with the ESL and uh, the EPL as well as the ECS spots. So that's why the price is so dramatic. Do I expect anyone to pay that? Most likely not. We'll see what happens though in the future if the unemployed for Christmas team will get signed to someone else. On top of that as well, I can't show you guys this clip because it actually is a Spanish clip, so you, most of you probably cannot speak. Or Actually, it wouldn't surprise me if you guys would speak that, but we do have some information out there. A clip from one of Phelps' streams. He actually confirmed he is actually going to be playing for the major for SK Gaming, and he is currently practicing to do so. So it will be Phelps, most likely for SK. Uh, accordingly to other sources out there, we had four former FaZe Fox, former Dignitas Fox, he was offered that major spot. Of course, he tried to qualify with that Dignitas roster so he could not play with SK Gaming, and apparently they chose Phelps over their coach. Uh, thank goodness, because I think Phelps is still a pretty solid character for that team. So it likely will be Phelps to play for SK Gaming. And also, very importantly, with our last update, CSGO last night, we also had some big things come out. I'll talk about this more in the future when we learn more about it. A new package was created and actually published to the Steam database, and in it we actually had this on screen for all of you. Of course, some, some random coding and also some random packages added but way at the bottom you guys see the billing type zero that means this is a no cost update so we'll see what time what that actually means in the future as of right now no one really knows it could be a thing for perfect world it could be you know maybe keychains coming to CSGO we're not really sure as of right now and hopefully cross your fingers it does not mean that in the future CSGO will be free I can't imagine right now what that would actually mean for the scene as many of you know in the past year or so we've seen an immense growth in cheaters I hope and I pray they're not going to make CSGO free although it would help the player base I just don't think it'd be a good idea I highly doubt that's going to what the update will be. We'll see in the future though what that actual free update is and if we can actually partake in it and if it's going to be beneficial for everyone and just how it works out. So hope you guys all enjoy this episode of CSGO News. I will see you guys on a couple days with some more updates and uh, hopefully some good things coming sometime soon for the CSGO scene. If you guys did enjoy, leave a comment down below and leave a like if you guys want to. And uh, as always, thank you all for watching. My name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I'll see you on a couple days. Goodbye.